Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the X5 Mini PC. Now this is a really interesting uh, mini desktop replacement that sells for under 70 bucks on Gearbest, which makes it one of the most affordable mini PCs that you can pick up. Not only does it run on a full version of Windows 10, but it also dual boots into Android, which is again, pretty unique. So you can easily plug it into a television or into a monitor and enjoy media content, gaming, in addition to productivity by running all the legacy apps that you would want through full Windows 10 desktop home edition. Uh, otherwise, it features pretty typical specs at this price point, and it includes a current generation Intel Atom X5 Cherry Trail processor that's has a quad-core chipset, coupled with 2GB of RAM and 32GB of built-in storage, of course expandable by uh, you know your own plug-in hard drive, SD card, stuff like that. Packaging here actually seems pretty good, and there's a basic QR code that you can scan to actually watch some quick tutorials published by the company. Again, the specific processor is the Z8350, which is pretty common. It's clocked up to 1.92 gigahertz and found on lots of these Windows tablets that we've been seeing recently. And it also features Wi-Fi in addition to uh, Bluetooth and, of course, Ethernet for wired connectivity. Opening the box, right on top there's access to an operation guide that's fairly well documented in color and tells you how to set up the computer for the first time and what the various ports correspond to. You can see it does have a full USB 3.0 port for uh, data transfer up to 5 gigabits per second and you can also plug in various cables and accessories. This is the product key information, how to set it up. It should be pre-established and registered already. This is the X5 that we'll be taking a closer look at in a second. And underneath here, we have the accessories, which correspond to the proprietary charging kind of cable. You can see that it does use a pen-based system uh, and has a okay cable length. I wish the cable was a little bit longer, but if you have an extension cable, plugging it into the wall shouldn't be an issue. Also, there is a full-size HDMI cable for connecting the box onto a monitor or a television, which is a pretty nice extra. So let's take a closer look at the design of the AlphaWise X5 first. So in terms of dimensions and overall fit as well as feel, it's actually very similar to other Android TV boxes and uh, kind of mini all-in-one desktops that we've seen in the past. What is interesting though is the coarse plastic material that they chose for the top. It actually kind of sparkles when you reflect it in the light. It's a sandpaper-like texture, but otherwise it's a polycarbonate uh, one-piece finish, so it's unibody and it feels relatively sturdy. It's actually very thin because this is a fanless computer, just like most Android TV boxes we've, we've checked out. Compared to the T11 Windows 10 uh, mini any computer that we just reviewed recently, it's actually smaller in terms of dimensions, which is great if you want portability and you want to take up less space on your desk. On the bottom, you have access to all the ports. They correspond to a dedicated power key, the AC power adapter, one USB 3.0, which you can extend by plugging in an adapter or a hub. There's also the full-size HDMI, wired Ethernet, and 3.5 millimeter jack for audio. There's a few ventilation grills to prevent overheating, and on the side, there's access to two more USB 2.0 ports. You have access to a full-size SD card reader, which is actually pretty cool that it's not just micro SD, and that's essentially it. The bottom here does feature rubber feet that prevents the TV box from sliding around on a surface or a desk, and again, the construction actually feels surprisingly solid for something that's so low cost, but offers two operating systems on board. So three USB ports is fairly average for a TV box of this price point and caliber, and uh, of course, you can again extend the ports by plugging in your own hub. So let's power it on and take a closer look at the software and performance next. The X5 is now powered on, and by default, if you don't click on any keys, it's going to boot automatically into Windows 10. Uh, so it's primarily, again, used as a mini desktop computer. The setup is fairly straightforward, so you do need to wait about five minutes for everything to initiate. The computer does have a built-in microphone, so you can use Cortana with it for uh, prompts as well as for using the digital AI to get responses to things. And it's going to guide you through setting up Wi-Fi, connecting to a Microsoft account if you have one, uh, before signing in and creating your password. You can see it's a very stock and clean install of Windows 10 with not, not too much blowware going on. And uh, the only thing that you see here is something that's called uh, Switch Now. This is a proprietary app. After you tap on this in Windows, it's going to quickly 
completely shut down and reboot into Android. And the same thing goes in Android, which I'll show you guys later on. So everything else, if you click on the home key here, you see it's a very stock install with not too much stuff. There is a Microsoft Office pre-installed, so you do have to purchase it yourself if you want those utility tools. But again, this is a full uh, Windows computer, so any of the legacy apps that you have may be running before on Windows 7, Windows uh, 8, can be installed here. That includes many games and, and popular productivity tools. Um, otherwise, you have only, again, the main utilities installed. That includes things like the notepad for quick notes, I suppose. There's paint if you want to quickly doodle something. There's also access to the Microsoft Store for downloading more games and programs, some recommended uh, games and uh, titles over here. And of course, you have access to the uh, menu down below here that we can tap on to have access to notifications and then toggling Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth on or off. In my quick testing, the Wi-Fi signal strength seemed fairly strong. You can see that I have roughly three bars. The router is roughly, I would say, uh, 10 meters away right now, so reception still seems to be quite good. I'm on a different floor, and there's no complaints there. Again, there's the Cortana search bar. Microsoft Edge is the pre-installed browser, although I would recommend Chrome if you're looking for a faster, more seamless experience. However, Edge is a bit more optimized to run on lower hardware, so if you find that your Wi-Fi signal strength is weak or if your RAM is getting low, this actually might get you slightly better performance when streaming video and uh, stuff like that, as long as you don't want the fastest speeds uh, in terms of uh, complex web pages. So if we take a look at the file explorer here, the first thing that you'll, not you'll notice is that the memory isn't huge uh, because there's only, again, around 16 gigabytes reserved for the Windows partition, and if we kind of zoom zoom on in, you'll see that we only have roughly uh, 4 gigabytes of free storage on the Windows 10 department. And that means if you have larger programs like Photoshop, it's probably not going to run very well or have enough space to be installed by default. And as a result, you would probably want to install a micro SD card or a thumb drive and uh, install the programs on there. So definitely something to keep in mind. So let's zoom out, and again, the computer itself has two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, but for most utility tasks and for regular things like file management, light uh, office, and word processing, it still seems to run fairly smoothly. Uh, two gigabytes of RAM is the minimum to run Windows 10, so you're not getting lightning fast performance, but uh, it's fairly optimized and smooth. So let's take a look at uh, perhaps computer, and then if we tap on uh, system properties, we can hopefully see that indeed we have a activated version of Windows 10, as we can see here on the bottom. And again, we have two gigabytes of RAM. This is a 64-bit operating system. So it's an x64-based uh, processor, which is good. You're not getting just the 32-bit version. It can install uh, many apps. There's no touch, of course, on this particular version. And again, the processor is the Intel Atom X5 Z8 350, clocked uh, base at 1.4 gigahertz up to 1.92 gigahertz. So all those things are confirmed and it seems to work fairly well. So let's take a look at the web browsing experience just by tapping on Edge. And let's see how long it takes to load up a complex page like the New York Times. It actually seems to be relatively speedy. Again, we don't have too many tabs or programs open in the background right now, so that's probably why things are loading slightly faster. But you can see that uh, it actually renders pages quite well. Uh, almost entirely, uh, you know, the page is loaded without any stuttering, any checkerboard patterns, and I can scroll through without any real delays. And of course, text and images and interactive elements are fully accessible. All right, so let's just jump into Android next and see how it fares. Let's click on yes. We are now in Android, and because this is a mobile OS, it actually is a bit more optimized to run on lower end hardware. So two gigabytes of RAM will see a bit more luxurious on here when it comes to multitasking. You can see that you have access to a pretty typical kind of home screen, although the wallpaper is custom. And we also have access to applications, pretty much just the stock uh, Google services like Chrome, Gmail, uh, as well as Google Play and the Play Store are all pre-installed. A few things that have been loaded by default include a custom video uh, viewer slash editor tool, and of course there's also YouTube on the side here, but everything else again is stock. There's also a file explorer that you can use to take a look at what's on an SD card or on a thumb drive. 
If we could launch quickly into settings here and scroll all the way down, take a look about this computer or device, you can see it's running on version 5.1, which is Android Lollipop. Now I do wish that it was running on something like uh, Android 7.0 uh, Nougat instead, especially since uh, Android Oreo is coming out 8.0, so it is a little bit outdated in that sense. But Regardless, Android Lollipop still can perform all the tasks that you would want it to, including all the most popular games and titles, uh, and the interface is still fairly sleek and responsive. You can see a virtual bar at the bottom for things like turning it off, uh, also for changing the volume, going back home, there's the multitasking drawer, dragging down a notification drawer, you can see that Wi-Fi is turned off by default, same thing with Bluetooth, so you do actually have to click on the uh, Wi-Fi that you want to install or connect to, uh, it's actually not synced up from the Windows side, so make sure that you kind of set it up again if there's a password on your router. Same thing with Bluetooth, it's turned off by default to conserve on battery and geotagging. You can see there's also an icon over here that says switch to Windows. You can tap on this and instantly it will reboot and again go into Windows 10. The nice thing about both Android Lollipop and Windows 10 is again the rebooting process is fairly swift and again takes less than 30 seconds from a cold boot to enter the system, which is pretty good. So anyways, let's, uh, uh, we're connected to the internet now. Let's open up Chrome. And uh, again, what's nice is that uh, Chrome offers syncing between the desktop as well as on the mobile versions. So if I'm Windows 10, I also installed Chrome and I logged in with my account. And same thing if I logged into my account on this Android version, all of my bookmarks, all of my history would be synced between the two. So syncing between uh, Android and, and Windows is actually quite seamless and makes a lot of sense. Uh, so I would recommend installing Chrome again on the desktop uh, platform just for that one purpose. So let's load up something like the New York Times and see how fast it loads up on the Android side. So far it seems like the speed is comparable, uh, actually slightly faster on Chrome uh, with Android. You can see that everything is fully loaded up including text uh, and there's not too much checkerboarding or jumping or skidding uh, or slowdown through the regular navigation. Uh, main UI seems rather smooth and responsive, which is nice to see. So if we went and searched YouTube on Chrome, it's just going to jump into the default YouTube uh, app just to save on processing, and this is a bit more optimized. You can see that uh, your content will load up slightly faster, and of course you can stream video as well up to 4K without any slowdowns or sluggishness. So it actually seems quite responsive and again easy to use, as expected from any other kind of Android computer or Android tablet. Again, 2 gigabytes of RAM is still not the top of the line configuration, and uh, that means if you are still multitasking relatively heavily with multiple tabs open, with a game open, some software, then you will still occasionally have a bit of sluggishness here and there. So it's not you know, as swift as a flagship processor and flagship uh, memory, but it works, and again, for general tasks like uh, playing back a few simple games, most titles will run if you close up uh, background apps, uh, Google services, things like that. It works without any issues. And again, the full Play Store experience is pre-installed, which is nice. And that allows you to download any titles that you would really want to. Uh, there's even the built-in microphone again, so you can use that to do Google Now and Google searches, just like with Cortana on the Windows 10 side of things. So overall, it works pretty well. Now, uh, I'm just going to end this by going into settings again and taking a look at memory of the Android side and just to see you know, how much storage is left. And you can see that we have around the same amount of... There's actually a bit more storage on Android. There's a 9.7 gigabytes, and out of that, you can see that roughly 9 gigabytes is available. So obviously, Android is a bit more optimized, and it requires less memory. And uh, with 9 gigs, you can still download quite a few programs and, and games and apps. Uh, I do wish, in a sense, that this was flipped. I wish that 9 gigs was for Windows 10 and 4 gigs was for Android, just because I think that Windows apps tend to take up a bit more space and uh, if you're, again, doing a bit more work and using this as a desktop replacement, which I think it's good enough for most people looking just for a simple computer and not something super demanding for tons of games and tons of productivity tools, then this will suffice. But the limited memory on the Windows side of things can be a potential downside. Uh, so if you are lo loading up lo uh, media content like photos or videos, streaming content through Netflix or Hulu, I would recommend, again, plugging in a hard drive or some type of offline storage storage just to expand on the built-in memory.
So anyways, that's pretty much it. Uh, so surprisingly, it actually works quite well between the switching and uh, I feel like it's relatively snappy in the regular day in and day out of performance. Um, again, the Intel X5 uh, Z8350 is kind of the mid-end processor of the X5 series. The Z8300 w was the bottom of the line chipset that came out last year, so this has a slight upgrade in terms of that processing speed, and that does help a little bit if you are running more intensive games and apps. I still wouldn't try to push it too heavily. It's not a Core M or a Core i series processor, so make sure you keep your expectations modest. So that's been the AlphaWise X5. At the end of the day, it isn't the best performing uh, you know, mini desktop or computer in the world. However, the most important thing is you have to remember the price. At under 70 bucks, it is one of the best values if all you need is a basic computer for processing, some light productivity, uh, tools like Microsoft Office, Excel, uh, maybe browsing the web with a few more intensive tasks, then it more than does the job, especially since there's also Android to cover the entertainment side of things that includes access to the full Google Play Store and services. And for most folks, at least, it's a great replacement for an aging desktop computer. And if you want a very light uh, station just for work as well as for play, then the X5 does a good job. The only draw downside is, again, 2 gigabytes of RAM as opposed opposed to 4 gigs, which would have been preferred. And again, keep in mind that although it is Cherry Trail, at the end of the day, it's still an Intel Atom processor. So make sure you're not expecting you know, lightning fast speed or you know, Photoshop and too many intensive tasks. And I think that you'll still be pleased with the overall experience, again, considering the super low price point of the X5. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This was our video first look and a quick review of the incredibly low cost AlphaWise X5 mini computer.